Hey guys. Uh, oops. Sorry, I was just messing around. I'm doing a um, rather than doing a, a video with just me talking. Um, I prefer to do a presentation um, and go through stuff this way, so you've actually got something to to view and, and read and listen to while we go through something that uh, that's been mentioned before. And I thought it'd be a good idea to to, to put this out there because it's not something we uh, that everybody might know about, um, but can is rather important, which is um, looking at fishing but specifically not uh, at, moon, at things like the moon, tide, sun, weather and uh, a few other factors that uh, you might not have known about uh, and with this information help increase your chances of, um, of catching fish. Uh, so in addition to when we're looking at gutters and holes we also need to look at uh, a, a number of factors that we'll go into now. Um, like in the, I like this little uh, dive, little picture I've included on the front here. It's done a nice job where it summarises um, some of the key factors that we want to look at. We'll, we'll be looking at more than just five, but um, when we're looking at the best times and days to fish, uh, this is some of the things we'll be looking at. First up, uh, so what we'll be going through is just a quick intro to what we say is uh, solar lunar fishing. Uh, essentially, solar lunar fishing. Um, uh, oh, actually, it's on the next side, so I'll talk about it on the next side. Uh, next, the next thing we'll be looking at is moon, the eight main phases of the moon, uh, and something that a lot of people might not be aware of. Um, what we call the moon's major and minor periods and the effects they have on fishing. Um, full and new moon uh, and its effects on fishing. A lot of people are already fully aware of full and new moon and the fact that generally those are the good times to go fishing. But I'm going to go into why that's the case. Um, uh, tides. Uh, going to, we're going to go into tides. The importance of, of, of the tides and what that does and how that affects your fishing chances is, um, and a little bit more about that. Uh, sunrise and sunset, uh, also why they're important, uh, do they do much um, and how they increase your effects. And lastly weather, uh, one of the items here being uh, your baronic measure pressure, so uh, it's something a lot of us, even I early on didn't know anything about and would never have considered it had any impact whatsoever on your catching fish, but it's actually something that's important. Um, the weather itself, i.e., you know, if it's a blue sky, cloudy sky, rainy, etc., and the wind. Uh, first off, just the intro and solar lunar fishing concept. Uh, first came, and before I go into it too much, not everybody uh, subscribes to this, same, this theory that, that uh, the moon and, and so forth controls um, or had dictates a lot to do with whether or not you're going to catch fish, but uh, studies and a lot of feedback has generally come back into uh, that this does make a difference. So. Um, 1926 guy John Knight there. He uh, originally uh, he was a hunter and a fisher, and he wanted to try and figure out how to predict the activity um, of both uh, the, the the behaviour and feeding habits of of animals, and uh, whether or not any of those could influence his uh, success success rate. Um, he investigated quite a number, I think there's like 33 or something that he did, but in the end he came up with the main factors being uh, the sun, the moon and the tides, especially in relation, in relation to fishing. And those were the three factors that he, he put in, so the, those are the main key aspects that affect your success rate. Uh, a decade later, apparently came up with the uh, Solina, gosh I'm saying that wrong, I apologise, the fishing chart. Uh, but a lot of, a lot of you might have heard of it is called the Fisher's Almanac. Um, uh, it's like a little book with um, the moon chart on it. Uh, and a lot of people believe that, that 
uh, and um, believe that it does make a big difference and can affect your chances of fishing. And, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a minute about why that can be important and also so a lot of other factors um, based around these theories um, that can influence um, uh, the chances of, of catching fish. So first up is the moon and the main uh, eight phases. Obviously the moon constantly changes, but there are eight main phases. Um, we're fully aware of the new moon and full moon, those are the ones most people know about. Uh, you know, in between we have crescent moon waxing, first quarter, gibbous moon waxing. Uh, on the other side, moaning of the gibbous, the last quarter and the crescent moon. Uh, the picture on the side, much better job of explaining it than I do. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a new moon. That, that's when you're, the sun, which is over here, um, blocks out, uh, is, is blocked out in uh, the light. And over here is where the, light, uh, the sun is being uh, reflected perfectly off the light. Uh, sorry, off the moon, and you get bright light at night. Uh, next slide shows actually going, sorry, next picture is going to describe this a lot better, but this is the first portion of it. Uh, so not the next slide, it comes up a bit later. But um, so that's the new on the full. Um, we've got a diagram, a little GIF that goes around that's quite, quite good at explaining um, those stages. But when we're looking at, uh, after we look at the, the eight phases, uh, the next portion that's really important are what we call the lunar periods. There are four of them, May, uh, there's two majors and two minor periods. So the major periods last generally for about two hours um, and they occur one when the moon is directly above you. Uh, it's called the lunar transit, not that it matters much what it's called, but it's the major is when it's directly above you, and these uh, these periods uh, affect your possibility of catching a fish. And the other one is when the moon is directly below you, so on the opposite side of the world, directly underneath wherever you may be standing. So those are the two majors. The two minors are the ones where uh, they last for about an hour, and they're either side. Uh, that's basically when your moon rises and the moon sets. So that's what they call the four lunar periods. Now the idea behind this is that fish, they become uh, more active during, during the, the um, uh, lunar periods. Uh, that's when they become, you know, you're getting more chance of, of, of catching fish. Now. Uh, sorry, I'm scanning my notes as I, I, I talk, so forgive me if I pause for a moment. Um, now, obviously, even though it does increase the activity, it not necessarily means that you're going to catch a fish. There's still a lot of other factors we need to consider, but it's something that you need to keep, that's good to keep in mind. And if we can uh, nail down a lot of the um, factors as we go through, the more that we can meet, the higher chance that we're going to get uh, a good fishing trip. Um, now, with your major and minor, during the here we go, during the, any given day, you're going to likely get uh, um, one major. So that's either with the moon above or below you, and a one minor. So uh, that's basically halfway between above and below. And there's two in a 24-hour period, um, and you usually only get one during the daylight. Okay, so the moon, the moon's obviously still moving around us uh, every day during the day. It's just that obviously we, it's harder to see because the sun's out, but um, you might even notice it at the time yourself. Uh, and some of you know uh, salt water. Salt water is generally more influenced by the lunar cycle than fresh water. Um, and it generally gets more positive feedback, this, this theory, than, than freshwater fishing does. Now, and this aspect uh, that's really important, and most people generally know about, are uh, your full and new moon. Okay, um, and they are what trigger uh, 
a lot of fish activity. And the reason why it triggers a lot of fish activity is because of the um, effect it has on the tides. With your new moon, um, new moon is where it is in between us and the sun. Okay, this creates the uh, biggest gravitational pull. Okay, that causes a bigger tide uh, or more tide, which brings um, more fish in, which increases the chance that you're going to catch more because that's bringing the fish in with the tide at the high tide, and you're going to get high tides. Um, and they when they call that uh, what they call um, spring tide is what uh, what they call them when they're big big like that. So it's you get bigger high tides uh, and lower low tides. Um, conversely, with um, this down here, I do apologise. This says neat. It's supposed to say neat. That's an uh, it's supposed to be a p. Um, the you on the other end. With a neat tide, you get lower high tides. You still get a high tide, but it's lower than what what you'd get in a spring tide. Uh, but you also get a higher low tide, if that makes sense. On the next uh, slide, you'll actually see um, the picture um, does a much better job of explaining it, and you'll be able to visualise it. But I'll just mention it there as part of this this one uh, now. The full moon, so that's when your moon's over here and it's getting all the sun light and you got a lot of light during the um, night time. This is where you'll more often get fishing that goes more into the night than normal. So if you've got a high tide that finishes later in the evening, um, you, the fish will generally keep biting later into the night because they can see better. We're seeing the new moon when they, when there's no light at night. You'll often find that uh, the fish will instead of when they start biting around sunrise or in the mornings, they'll actually keep biting until later in the day because they can um, they're seeing more and they they're getting active with their fishing. Uh, sorry, I said fishing, but active with their eating um, and then taking their rest later. So there's a, basically a switch between the two. So uh, knowing whether you're going out for a full moon or a new moon um, is important so you know when uh, roughly what times you should be aiming to fish from uh, or to. Um, so you wouldn't be on a new moon trying to fish late into the evening because the fish aren't going, they're just not going to bite or there's less likely chance they're going to bite. Like with everything I say, this is um, not guaranteed. This is just information that generally turns out to to uh, be um, more successful, if I can put it that way. Um, uh, this one does a great job with uh, with explaining not only tides but what I just talked about with uh, new moons and full moons and spring and neap tides. Now with the tides themselves, uh, it takes the moon 24 hours and 50 minutes roughly to return to the same spot that it was in um, beforehand. So for example, if it was 9 a.m. this morning, the high tide was hit and hit, tomorrow it'll be roughly 9.50 when high tide is again. So it constantly will change, okay? Um, this does a great job here of explaining what I meant by uh, spring and new tides the different. So in a spring tide, here where we have the, the moon and the sun in alignment with the earth, this creates a great gravitational pull, increases the tide dramatically, and you're going to see a high, high tide, much higher. But you're also going to see a much lower low tide. And over here, conversely, when we're hitting neap tides, so we've got a first quarter and a three, uh, third quarter moon, you're going to see a lower high tide, but not as low low tide. Okay, so that's the slight difference between the two. So when you aim the fish, um, is, as it's written, as I mentioned here, what you want to try and do is 
you want to fish, uh, aim to fish an hour before high, the high tide hits, one hour during the high tide period, and one hour after. Uh, it's not hard, hard and fast, uh, but uh, it's a good guide point to take on board. Um, but it's also taking into account uh, the moon phases and the major and minor periods because they're also important. This also applies to low tide, okay? Um, but remember, th th so the reason um, why this works uh, is that the f um, fish actually follow the depth of the water. So with the high tide, that brings the fish in, um, and that's why that those high tides are important. Um, and when the, it's the full moon and it's night time, bringing the fish in as it comes to dusk, they can see a lot better and they'll, they'll fish for a lot later. Now this one's a great, I like this because it's got some nice um, graph, uh, GIFs here that, that, that do a good job of summarizing what I said but in a visual format. So imagine for example that this piece of weed here is actually a fish. So at low tide your fish will be further out and at high tide what it does is it starts drawing uh, your fish in towards the beach. So you're going to, when you're casting out, you're going to have more chance of hooking up because the fish actually come in. And that's, it shows you how the uh, current goes in and then obviously, you know, as the tide, you know, uh, the waves crash in, underneath it folds back in and it uh, ebbs back out. Uh, but that's important just to notice because um, whether you've done much beach fishing or not, you might notice you know your line goes tight as the the current pulls you out, and then goes loose as the current pulls in. So uh, that's what's going on there. So it's important to maintain contact, maintain contact with your line, um, and be aware of that. This here is a nice little graphic that perfectly describes, or, or sorry, uh, visualizes how I described um, the full new moon, spring, and neap tides. Right. So the here sun, this is your new moon, right? opposite sun is your full moon, and you can see here, this is uh, the tides, and how the tides are shifted based on the moon's position, and you can see here, as soon as it hits new moon, it's a spring tide, and as soon as it hits uh, full moon, spring tide, meaning it's going to be the highest it's going to be, and through this section, you're not going to get it as high tide, it's going to be a little bit flatter um, than uh, what you normally have. Um, and, th th and it just doesn't, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that with your tides, just because it's coming in, you might also get a period where uh, it can be slack at the top and, or um, end at the bottom of the tide, so it's not necessarily perfectly on time can have a bit of slack either way, so something to keep in mind. Um, now this chart does, uh, I, I included because it such, does such a great job of uh, helping visualise what I've just explained in relation to a few things. One, with the, the moon or the lunar periods, with the moon up or uh, with the moon major, which is where the moon's above you. Uh, and this is where another major, but with the moon below you. Um, oh, underneath your feet. Okay, so this line through the middle here, this is your actual tide, and you can see here this here sunrise, the moon set, up here sunset, and moon rise. So when you, what you want to do is you want to try and fish. Uh, that's great because it's got the hours on the bottom. You want to aim to fish, you know, an hour or two before that high tide. Fish through the high tide area come out the other side and fish through to the sunrise. Now if it's a new moon, you might fish through to a bit later in the day because the fish will bite for a, a longer period of time because uh, at night time they're not going to have the same sort of um, opportunities. Uh, conversely, over here, uh, this is where at night time you got your high tide coming in uh, close to sunset, so you'll fish beforehand. You might fish all the way through here, and if it's a full moon and you've got lots of light, you might continue to fish right through to a bit later in the in the, in the night because the fish will still stay on 
later than normal. So that's a great chart to summarise some of those points we've already made. Uh, as mentioned, sunrise, sunset effects. Um, I don't know anybody out there who wouldn't already agree that most of the time sunrise, sunset, a good time to go fishing. Uh, the reason why is sunrise is that they become more active right before the dawn. Um, and as mentioned, they'll typically continue through to about the sunrise and then they'll go off the bite and rest for, for a bit of the day and just swim around and, and do not much at all, uh, avoid your bait. <laughs> Uh, and then in the sunset, much the same, they'll, uh, they'll come on the feed before uh, dusk and um, continue through until it gets uh, a bit darker and then they'll rest during the, the night time. But once again, uh, we need to think about that full moon and that new moon thing where either you might want to fish later in the sunrise period and same for the sunset fish later because it's lighter and the fish can see better. So, um, like I've mentioned in the notes here, this not hard and fast rule. Um, I've, I've often fished uh, during all times of the day and still caught stuff. Um, so, uh, some of this can also be affected, like I said, by the lunar effect. You might have hit a minor. Um, during the period of the day and you have been lucky enough to hook up during that time period so that can happen as well um, and as I've just mentioned there new moon might feed more during daylight and night and um, full moon might fish more into the night okay as I said not assured of a success, you're not going to guarantee hook up. There are a lot of other factors involved, but these are all things that'll help. Next one uh, is something that a lot of people don't, uh, even myself, say. Uh, uh, early on, didn't think too much about um, barometric pressure uh, being something that might actually affect fishing, but it can do. Um, and there are six main pressures. Now please excuse this, I have just noticed this is low pressure here. That's supposed to say high because there's already a low there. So you have six main ones. Uh, high pressure, not low. High pressure, medium pressure, low pressure, rising, stable and falling. Um, now I know just here, I'll go through them all in a minute, but the main ones that you want to be aware of are high pressure. Uh, this is where and there's really not a lot of point fishing. Uh, fish go deep and they become less active. Um, falling pressure is one of your better times to fish. Uh, they become more active and they really get uh, on the move and get on the bite. Rising, very much similar to um, uh, falling. They start to become more active. Um, and they start to look around for feed and get hungry and get them on the bite. Your medium and stable, both pretty much the same, that's your normal activity. So that's pretty much your standard where it's up to up to you, as far as the fishing is concerned, to um, be in the right spot, be in the gutter, be in a hole, fishing with the right sort of stuff to, to get on the bite, okay, because it, it doesn't make too much of a difference in those two categories. But the, the, the high pressure portion does, they'll just go off. And there's a reason for that, which I'll, I'll cover in a sec. So uh, I've got a nice little um, a diagram here that helps visualize it as well uh, with a scale. So you can actually have a look to see whether or not um, how you're fitting on the scale of uh, uh, your, your pressure readings and, and whether or not you're going to have good good uh, uh, weather for catching fish so like I mentioned rising pressure is uh, it's got you got uh, improving weather your fish are feeding more at rhythm um, they say target deep water structure but uh, if you're fishing off the beach it's a bit hard this is more if you're in a boat you're going deeper because they, they are going deeper uh, falling pressure so this is when the weather is starting to degrade. So this is something like 
before a storm starts to hit. This is where it's best to fish. So they really become active um, and they really become get on the bike. Stable, and this is fair weather, uh, normal activity. So like I mentioned, it's saying various techniques. So this is where you know, um, it's up to you as a fisherman to, to work out what works and what doesn't and just have a crack and see what you can find. As I mentioned, two bad ones we have, a high and low. Those are the two ones that really turn fish off. So even though, funny enough, clear sky is great for us if you like a beautiful day where there's not a cloud around. Uh, this does slow your feeding of your fish, uh, fish down. Uh, they try and avoid the, uh, the lights, they'll go deep and they'll get into uh, shade or debris or something and it's a bit hard to get them out. So there'll be someone with a boat driving out into a reef and trying to tempt them out with something. Um, same with the low, this is cloudy or rainy weather. Uh, turns them off, they, they just become uh, slow and they go deep as well. Medium, same with stale, it's really up to you as a fisherman to, to go on uh, and see what you can get. Okay, so yeah, it's important, so look out, up and have a look at your, your pressure, um, how it's going and how it's running towards when you're thinking about going fishing, having a look at what's going on with the, with the weather, uh, with the lunar cycle and, and so forth. Have a look at these factors when you're planning your fishing trips. Next up, weather conditions. Uh, some people, you know, sometimes you just don't think about this as something that might actually affect whether or not you're going to hook up, but it can be. Uh, clear. As a, so this is, like uh, I mentioned with the pressure, this is where it causes your fish to go deep, take cover. So that's, that's the, I mean, that's perfect for us when you want a beautiful blue sky and a nice sunny day. Uh, generally, you're not going to get much luck um, in that scenario. Um, fair, uh, that's just normal fishing conditions, 50-50 sort of situation, um, up to you. Um, yeah, like a cloudy rainy, like we've had lately, um, less active fish, so not going to have a huge chance of catching much. Two good ones are before a storm, so what happens is your fish, they actually feel the change in that pressure and that um, increases their attention, they perk up and they get hungry and they go looking for a feed. So that's, that's when your best chance of hooking up is. Typically, um, similar to after the storm, they'll go on the move again and um, increase your chance of, of catching them. Um, similar. Uh, this, this little diagram pretty, is actually um, in relation to bass in, in America, but it, it follows the same concept uh, where over here, like it says, pressure drops, you get higher winds, uh, and I'll mention winds in a second, you get a lot of surface chop, you got a lot of uh, waves uh, and so forth, and that's where you get this sort of hungry fish um, moving along. Uh, then uh, as, as the conditions change, um, uh, this is like uh, during this, this period is when they go off. Um, oh, sorry, I, I missed where I was at, but basically uh, after this time you've got your uh, less conditions and um, in our case, uh, once the storm's finished, uh, get um, you might be getting on the bike, but once it's stabilised and back to normal, 50-50. Um, that's this fair condition here. That's what we're looking at in this in this circle of um, conditions. Oops, I hit the button. Anyway, next one, wind. Uh, now I would have thought. Um, now wind, uh, apart from being uh, difficult if uh, it affects your cast. It can actually have an effect on chance of, of, of hooking up to. Uh, now, although the picture here um, sort of indicates a freshwater scenario, uh, where in this case, like say, um, debris falling down and uh, encouraging fish to come to the surface to, to, to look for whatever's there that, that uh, gets blown around in the wind and into the, into the water. Um, 
This also works for our saltwater perjury fish where it churns up the water um, as most like for our tailor. They love that uh, or real windy, choppy um, uh, uh, condition. Sorry, I'll spit it out eventually. Um, now that draws them out, and they'll come in closer uh, into that churned up bit where they know that they can hook onto that bait fish or the fish that uh, be less likely to see them in, in normal circumstances if it was flat and clear and um, they'll, they'll see the tail come and they might not, uh, they're not going to bother, they're going to wait until the conditions are just right. So like this, you've got wind and the food and the fish all hidden, hidden in. So if, if, you've got, if you're in the right position and you set yourself up over here and you've got a nice little gutter that's just off the surface, just off the beach, sorry, um, you, you won't have to cast that far to get into it. Uh, and if all your conditions are matched up and you're set up right, there isn't any reason why you won't hook up. Um, and you might maybe have to chuck on an extra bit of weight or something to get it out, but uh, these, are, these are the sort of conditions you want to look for. So in summary, so best time of the day, we're looking at phases of the moon and gravitational pull. So as I mentioned, the major and minor of the lunar periods, um, the full and uh, noon moons, uh, those are all, all important things, uh, particularly when the moon's closest to the Earth, creates a, or and when the moon and the sun are in alignment, creates the bigger tides, and that pulls your fish in. So that's that's the time of the day that that's your aiming at, okay? And with the new and the full moon, remember to keep in mind uh, which one does what as far as um, whether you fish uh, you know in the morning later or whether you fish later into the evening, okay? Uh, so. It's important to look that information up and keep that in mind. Um, and the best time uh, during those two major and minor lunar periods, as I've, I've alluded to earlier. Uh, more so with your major, and particularly if this coincides with sunrise and sunset. Okay, so if you can get all of those things lined up nicely, and you found yourself a great gutter uh, or a, a hole, then there is uh, no reason why you shouldn't um, uh, shouldn't get some luck. Okay. When I say see website, uh, I'm talking about there's a weather web website called um, uh, www.win.willyweather.com.au. It's a great site. I use it. Um, has uh, you just put in where you want where you're looking at, like um, whatever suburb or area, Mandra. And so weather has weather, your wind, which includes directions, your speeds, average, strongness, and direction, um, your rain, your sun, your moon, your tides, and your swell. So all the important information that, that go into making the right decisions are on there. Uh, and you can have, uh, what's it, one, three, and five day forecast. Obviously, as you get further out, less likely that's going to be absolutely on par and correct. But uh, it's a good something to look up and plan towards, so that when you go out to fish, you're you're setting yourself up for success, not setting yourself up for um, uh, catching nothing, uh, coming back with nothing. Um, and I just chucked this in here as I pulled up a lunar calendar for 2021. Um, be aware that make sure you look for the one for um, West Australia. So I think it's UTC eight we're in. Um, and you can check out what month you're in, at what date, and then that tells you what moon cycle we're at. Um, and I'm not sure whether this one was, I got the correct one up, but the, you know, this is one of the ones. So make sure you find, they're, they're out on the internet for free, so you can just look them up, um, or on the websites, they're there, um, and it helps you make uh, good decisions on when to go, um, and when's your best chance of success. Finally, I thought as a, just a tiny bit, not on, on the subject of, uh, of, of what we just discussed, uh, just a little bit off topic, but I thought I'd re-mention this because there's a lot of uh, discussion that goes into finding gutters and holes, um, and I will be doing a separate video on location, both onshore 
and using a drone from above so that we can really highlight some of these, uh, uh, these gutters um, and holes uh, to give you guys a real idea of what to look for and, and how best to position yourself to uh, in line with everything else to give you the best chance of catching um, you know, some good fish, um, which we all want to do. Who, who, does, who doesn't want to go out and you know, catch a duck nut? Um, I know I don't. Uh, at least going out catching something is better than um, uh, nothing. So this one's just a little diagram shows you how when the swell comes in, you get you'll see a breakers, then you'll see uh, like in some of my pictures I shan't show on where you'll get a flatter, uh, deeper, greener looking colour, and then you usually get your breaker as it comes towards the shore. That bright, that deeper, greener, or or um, a different colour signifies that that's a deeper section, and that's generally what you call a gutter. Um, and a hole, now this has a sandbar and shore on the side. In one of my shots I've shown you where there was a reef on either side, and then there was this deep hole that was between the two. Uh, during, it would be great during a um, high tide, because that would have filled up um, quite high. Um, and the depth would have brought the other fish in. So you know that if you can find places like this and like this, and even here, there's a low tide version of the gutter. That shows you how and this, this is obviously um, uh, shallower water. This is a deeper, deeper coloured water. Um, and this, this is actually just indicating that this is the bank of the shallow. This is where it deepens out. So. There are chances, just because it's low tide doesn't mean you're not going to catch anything, it just means you need to look in different spots. So I just add this in as something um, extra for the end of it. So that's, uh, that's pretty much my um, end of the presentation thing. And I, 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 sorry if I messed up a bit, I forgot to add a few things in. Um, I'm hoping I went through all my notes and touched on everything I needed to. So that all that information, you can just review at your own pace and um, make sure that when you go or you're looking at your fishing trip, if you look at uh, aligning most of those um, most of those items all in a row, and you find one of these and one of these, that you're going to set yourself up for a success. Uh, as best as possible and then it's just really down to you as an angler to, to um, put yourself in the best position to catch something and um, I wish you guys all the best and tight likes there um, and that's me for it thank you